Hello everyone. So we've got a new stable diffusion tutorial. Let's get started. I'm going to talk about more details of masking and segmentation in stable diffusion using Comfy UI because these are very important things we have to deal with when we are doing animations, especially when we are using the Comfy UI. You have to understand the concept before you can try segmentation using the workflow that I built in the last videos here. And yes, I have made some updates to this workflow rather than using one IP adapter. I can now do it like the Rave Animate Diff workflow that customizes the characters and backgrounds as well. However, I found that using just one IP adapter is very limited for handling only one character. Therefore, I have been trying different segmentation methods. Previously, we talked about the person mask generator custom node. This is kind of beginner friendly. You can simply enable whether you want to mask the face, background, etc. You can do that very easily here. Just input an image, like loading an image here. You can get the mask preview from here already. One easiest way to identify what kind of things you have masked is using a mask preview tool like the Comfy Essentials or the KJ Note that you can preview your mask. Trying this one, you will see what will happen here. We're getting an out of range error because we have not composed anything here yet. So whatever we just focus on this one is good enough. What we see here is that once we have selected face, we can see from the source image here, we got the face masked in our output here. The KG Note has a better representation that is easier to understand. We have masked the face here. And if you mask the background, that is another way to invert the mask. Then that way, we are going to only edit the content in this white colored area. That means the mask background will change here as well. So what we can do here is basically select all these features to enable them but I find that this is only able to handle like a single person or single character, etc. If you have other objects you want to mask, it is not going to be possible. So in my updated workflow for animations with different diffusion models that I have used, the segment anything model is very similar to the Coco segmenter that we used previously in Rave Animated. But the Coco segmenter is based on the coloration of our masking areas to do the masking. Segment Anything enables us to specifically mask certain items or certain characters in our image. Then that way, we can better focus or laser target what we want to mask in our image. For example, like this one, we have the golden dress as we can see here. We don't just do a human mask, that's too simple. Basically, that is only masking for the character itself. But what if I want to mask the hair only? You can do that here. The first time it runs, it will be downloading these two models. If you have that, it will take a second to load and you will see the mask of the hair here. Then you can bring this into a very traditional basic workflow like this and you can bring up the masked area as the latent image to replace this for your latent masked area to create an output using different colors of hair for example here i have a vae encoding to receive our input image and i have set latent noise mask here to receive our input image from here and also the masked area of this image so for example i have the hair mask and in the text prompt, we can identify the hair. Like for example, I want purple hair. And right here, we can just do whatever we want to do here. I set the denoise strength on 5 to test it out first. I can set this up as a very typical text to image workflow just to test if this works or not. And right now, as we can see, the mask is already appearing. Uh, hopefully there are some different colors and, um, and yes, we got different colored hairstyles here. But of course you can see there are some pixels that are not perfectly rendered. So what you will want to do as the next step is maybe use a detailer to enhance this image, or you can set up another DDIM sampler. That is the easiest way to do this. For example, I have another sampler. I can select all the same conditions and I can use the first sampler's K sampler latent image data and map that into and connect that into the second K sampler. Then we can have another latent image here as well. And lastly, we can connect the VAE and we are good to go. Let's increase the sit numbers. 
and as we can see right here side by side, there's still something going on at the back ends, the back of the character, like these little dots. We can fix that using upscalers or the detailers. I will not go through that too deeply in these videos, as I just want to focus on masking today. I found that this is a more flexible way to use segmentation and masking. As you can see in the previous anime diffusion workflow, the Rave Plus anime diffusion workflow, I have combined the segmentation mask using the Coco Segmenter, and we can try that as well. That will be a different style of masking. For example, we have the Coco Segmenter, we have the mask from color, and we can group the mask and mask blur to show our mask data here, and you can also try to preview the Coco Segmenter. It is going to be different. Uh, you see this way, we are only able to separate the characters and this background wall and the objects behind here are identified using different colors. And by using the red, we are only selecting the characters as the masked area. But one thing here is that we cannot be very specific in masking a single item. So let's try out another image. We will see there's a difference. For example, like this AI image that we generated in the previous tutorial, if I want to mask only these two cups, it is easier using the segmentation prompt. For example, I want to say the coffee cups and just press generate. You will see right here, it is only bringing these two cups highlighted in the mask section, the output of the mask preview, I should say. And here in the Coco Segmenter, well, you can only define it by the color and by the color of that, it is the red, which is the character itself. So each item on the backgrounds and the items on the table are going to be eventually different colors and we cannot predict what color is that. Mostly the Coco Segmenter is by default for segmenting the characters or any humans that are marked as the red color. So that is the only easiest way we can identify in the Coco Segmenter using this method. The newer method here that I used recently is quite efficient for any detail work like this. I can change the cups to let's say two women holding teacups with hot water or something like that. And let's see what will come out in the result. It should not be just, you know, Starbucks uh, style paper cups like that. And uh, there you go. We got other styles of cups. And this is a glass cup. You know, it looks like a glass style cup for tea and water. So you can do, okay, in the second sampler, it's even enhanced with more details of the cups. As you can see, it's not coffee anymore. It looks like a red teacup. That's kind of better. We can try green tea and see what is in the content of the cup. Okay, so it even changed this to a green colored cup, but then the AI models do understand green tea and zoom into the content. Here we can see some green colored liquid water. So it looks like it represents green tea. Yeah, we can do something like that. And of course, you've got the bad hands that you have to fix for the overall image. So after doing the masking task here, you can bring this image to another workflow for enhancing the hands and adding some details to it. That is basically the more flexible style of doing segmentation masks by using segment anything. For example, if I want to change only this lady's dress, let's say I want, let's try some prompt engineering if that works or not. Let's say the right side woman's dress is a pink dress Let's say I want a pink dress with some jewelry diamonds. Yeah, with some diamonds. Let's say we can do that. So yeah, it will be masking this character's area and changing the character's dress into another style. Actually, it looks better than what I expected for the dress. It is a pink color with, you know, some shiny objects on the top. It looks like diamonds because I have defined that as a pink dress with some diamonds. So yeah, this is how we can do it here. The second sampler adds more details to the clothing and basically you can use other things like the ultra latex providers. You can use the deep fashion to YOLO models for segmentation. For the further enhancement of your clothing, for example, we have this output image. I want to enhance the color and the details of this dress. Maybe we can use something like that. We can use this ultra latex detector provider. We select the deep fashion model. 
so what it does, it will automatically detect whatever fashion objects are on this image. In this case, we have this dress, the green dress as well, and then the pink dress. It will be enhancing both fashion items in this image for the output result. And there we have the face detailer node for that. So actually, the face detailer, it is not only for doing faces. It should rename this one. It should be detailer only. That would better represent what this node's function is for. Because we can use a segment detector to do other segmentations here as well. Like, for example, we can use this one for the segment detector as well. But then we have to connect the models and the conditions. For example, we need to use the models here. We have to use the clip here and the VAE as well and the VAE connecting to here. And the positive and negative prompts, we will be using the conditioning here. And there you go. We got this in the detailer. Usually, you can just use the randomized seed. So each time, it will generate a different output for you. So you can do some trial and error with that. And let's see what we have for our detailed fashions. So as you can see, this is for both different people's clothing. So the outfit of this one is going to turn into that. And the pink color dress is already doing well in the second sampler. So it does not have any big changes in the final detailer result here. But as we are seeing, the green dress is very clearly, the detailer node here has used the segmentation providers and it does work and do something on the new output image. So that is it for these demonstrations. I hope you guys understand how to use segmentation using segment anything. And once you understand that, it will be easier to use the animate diff workflow and customize your output videos. That is going to further enhance how you set and control the different styles in your IP adapter results. Using IP adapter and changing the styles of your animation video. I hope you guys got some inspiration and I'll see you in the next videos. Have a nice day. Bye.